so it's a tool for managing stream recordings and in my mind so much more <laughs> all, all of these features uh, it, it does some of this and I hope someday it'll do all of this uh, but essentially it's the thing that I've been working on to make it so that the part that I really want to have happen but I find really annoying to do which is to take uh, you know, I stream like four days a week, get some stuff on YouTube, uh, get VODs up that are not just a dump of the whole stream, uh, but are cleaned up and sliced up and all that, get that over there. This tool is supposed to help. Um, and I had made some progress uh, on that front. Actually, this is why it's complaining about this right now. Uh, I had started to work in a separate branch yeah, I have a draft pull request here that has a bunch of changes to do with being able to export an episode um, created in this tool and turn it into a OTIO. So it's like an open timeline IO file that's importable, importable in DaVinci Resolve. So we're, we're actually pretty close to the thing that was the original inspiration for doing this project. Um, I thought though that I wouldn't actually work on this more today. I'm kind of at a boring part where I have successfully generated. Um, so the OTIO file format is like a JSON format. It's exportable from uh, DaVinci Resolve and importable into DaVinci Resolve. I actually wrote a blurb about this in the, uh, in the Discord uh, coding channel. But um, so that works. Like you can export from DaVinci Resolve, you can take that file and import it back in. I did make a file kind of by hand as well, matching that structure and import it into DaVinci Resolve. So there's evidence, proper evidence that this, this path will work. Uh, but now I'm at the point where I'm trying to fine tune, um, essentially making code that will generate a file that matches the um, that matches up with the file exportable from Resolve and that is importable and successfully imports. Uh, so that doesn't quite work, but that's what I'm working through. But that's going to be a lot of back and forth. I'm not even sure that uh, firing up DaVinci Resolve is going to play nicely with having OBS running and, and other stuff. So I, I'm just not going to risk it. But yeah, I have some tests and stuff. So this is all in that uh, uh, issue four branch, corresponding with um, issue number four <laughs> that is uh, open and in progress. There we go. All right, so that's out there. Um, but like I said, I'm not gonna work on that today. Instead, I wanna continue with some of the work we were doing uh, last time around, uh, um, around getting the um, detected silences and turn those into episodes in our UI and then probably circling back and seeing if there's any back end stuff that we need to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of this work, um, basically up until now, I've just been pushing everything onto the main branch. And I think I don't want to, at some point, like at starting with uh, this work that I was just talking about, I'm going to start doing pull requests and separate branches to keep everything uh, separate so I can work on multiple things since there's a, gro a growing amount of surface area and places to, to work on stuff. Uh, but I think for now, since this is already in flight and I've just been kind of pushing it to main, I'm going to keep on doing that. Um, yeah, that, that would be the plan. So issue number one, which we, we made some progress on last Sunday, was um, the ability to extract audio track, identify pauses, preview creation of episodes. And, um, and, and I think implicit in this not actually said is this, this last part. So having a button to create the episodes from the periods. So if I go back to, uh, here's, here's the UI. So here's the UI that we were working on last time around. And it, I wouldn't call it good, but it works. 
And the idea would be that we can select um, the these periods of time, which represent effectively the breaks that I take every hour throughout a stream. And um, yeah, the, the, the panning and zooming and stuff in this is, is kind of janky as well, but I'm not gonna deal with that now. Um, I did do some research actually in, in, uh, in that vein about other components that are out there that we could potentially use. Um, they're either very specialized or they are, there wasn't a, something that we could pull in that would just give us the logic without an actual UI component. And then that we could really customize. So that might be a thing to do. I think more broadly, as we get further into this, there may be stuff we can, that we are implementing in this project that we can extract out and then publish uh, like to crates for Rust or to um, uh, NPM for JavaScript TypeScript stuff. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But all this is open source, uh, HGPL3. So um, that is kind of carrying on the same vein. So anyway, back to the, the what we're trying to do right now is add yet another button here that will be enabled once we've selected uh, one or more silences, I guess. I guess technically you could just have the button always, right? And if you haven't selected any, then the episode is the whole period of time. But the idea will be that we'll click a button and it should do something. And that something is, well, create episodes, right? Um, we just have it do that and it'll just like spin and think and do it. I don't think we need to have like a dialogue or any kind of additional UI between, between those steps. Okay, let's start with maybe the button. So this is all in our front end. Uh, there have been a few different changes, additions, tweaks, etc. in the intervening week. Um, I think I mentioned before, maybe, yeah, maybe last week, that there was some stuff I wanted to, uh, was testing out, and that it was something that if we had Storybook, we could kind of test it in isolation. Well, now there's Storybook, um, which I had been using, oh, right, so, a very obvious thing <laughs> that I did uh, fix was in the uh, the duration input. So if this goes all the way up to 999, this increments and this goes back to zero. And we can support having, like this works in other words, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, let's see, let's refresh this page. I don't actually want to change those values. Um, not that, actually, yeah, I guess. Yeah, if I were to change these values, I could save. And I would save it back to the, the record. Yes. These are now saved into the record. Okay, so anyway, very easily distracted. Um, so we are working inside of the streams part of the UI. And this is the, this audio tab is the stream silence detection input. Is it? <laughs> we have a lot of commented out code that uh, we may or may not use. So we have a scan button, detect silences, so that's that. And then a check status, and then a timeline, and then an array input. Um, I could go <laughs> on another aside about um, 
it's it's been kind of clear that there's some performance issues especially like getting into this page like navigating in and going to the audio tab it it hiccups a little bit um and some of that we fixed by reducing the increasing the threshold looking for slightly longer silences so there are fewer of them uh, you can see there's st still a bunch of little ones here and there to reduce the number of um, it's not so much about the UI elements, it's that we have these different form elements and each one is tied into React State. And there's just a lot of overhead that I think potentially would, I think, would go away if we were to not use array input, but were to build our own custom uh, component here. Um, right. And that, that was originally, I think, what I was intending to do, but then making this work turned out to be slightly more complicated. Uh, what was the deal with that? What was the deal with that? Um, something about using use input, right? This was gonna use use form context and stuff. I, I don't know, um, but it's not something I care too much about right now to, to solve, but just as an aside, this could be better. This, this, the way this, the performance of loading this page does not have to be this way. I just am not setting aside the time to deal with it right now. Instead, I'm gonna make it worse. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna add a new button uh, here and we'll just create a new uh, thing, like kind of like scan button where we're gonna do uh, use mutation and we're gonna use another custom uh, method on the data provider and the reason for that is this is something i was thinking about we could um there is like a, a baked in way to create a kind of record right so if we've defined what a uh, an episode is as a record type in react admin via uh via what in our apps here uh, which I have now, this exists, and these views actually exist now. Um, and in our data provider, um, it just kind of auto does it using the simple REST data provider. It it says, oh, you want to deal with this record type? Okay, it must be at you know base URL slash record type. So it'll just kind of auto do it. And we could say, oh, go, go create an episode. And then we'll call the back end and we'll do that. If we want to create multiple episodes, we could, you know, do uh, promise dot all uh, and generate a, a list of promises and, um, it, you know, create multiple in parallel or in series if we wanted to do that or we like needed one piece of, like if we needed to create one record, record and then wait to get some data back, like an ID to create another record, we could do that. But thinking ahead a little bit, I thought it would be good to have an API endpoint that would allow us to create multiple records at the same time. So like a bulk create. So in CRUD API, uh, I have a stream no, episode bulk create. Um, and this Right now, it takes a stream ID, an optional thumbnail URL. Unwrap or empty, that's, that's interesting. Where's this coming from? This is nullable. So instead of it being unwrap or, and then an empty string, we just do, um, how do we represent null here in Rust? Is that valid? No. How do we set thumbnail URL to be null? Let's 
What is the type of this equal function? No, no, okay. This function allow, follows SQL semantics around none null values. So equal none will never match. Use is null instead. Wait. Creates an equal expression. Interesting. Is this is this the right syntax? Are we doing this elsewhere? Yeah, values equal. Uh, and we're doing the, the same wrong thing here. None. Okay, expected struct std string string found option option. Interesting. With thumbnail URL, well that thumbnail URL is not the one we're addressing. It's the one that's in models. Or is it? Episode thumbnail option string. So why? I guess there's literally an example where we are casting. I'm telling it what the, the type is here. Perhaps we need to do that. What is, uh, you know, I don't know that we need unwrap then. Are you happy with that? It seems like Rust Analyzer is happy with that. So that's probably what we, what we should do in the other place as well. <laughs> So this will be body. Body here being this create episode request struct, which is option string already. I'm pretty sure that the, the description is not nullable. Yeah, it's text. Okay, so the other part is right. I wonder if we're doing that wrong everywhere um, where we have nullable things. Probably. I'm pretty sure that file was just uh oh this one's not optional. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the other one was a copy paste, but I decided for some reason <laughs> for some reason to make it the thumbnail URL optional, aka nullable, um, for the episode model. That will be a whole other thing that I don't think that I've even put in my features list is managing thumbnails for episodes for YouTube videos. Um, it'd be really cool to have a thing to like load in a base image and then have it generate like overlay text for the thumbnail or do something. Hmm. Ooh, <laughs> just have AI generated art per thumbnail. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a, a different stream. Uh, okay, so, cool. Anyway, so we have create bulk uh, and it takes a bulk create episode request, which is just a vec uh, episodes, it's an object that has an episodes key and a list of the, the internal request, which has the, the tracks and the tracks here are just defined as a start and end as a duration. So like within the whole episode or within the whole stream, they're at a particular start point and stop point is where the episode is, uh, except there might be multiple. So something I'm not modeling here, but we could do is have it so that an episode could have, it, it could be non-contiguous bits. I want the data model, the API and the database of representation to support that. And the, the code that I was working on yesterday for doing the export to support that, uh, we're not going to worry too much about the input for that here. Um, I might look at doing some of that once we get into the, the CRUD UI for the episode, but, uh, yeah, anyway. Okay. So, we have an API um, that might work. 
Uh, and then in our data provider in the front end, so switching back to, to TypeScript stuff, um, we'll create a custom method here uh, to create uh, like bulk create ep uh, episodes. Or we could have a generic bulk create function where we would just take the resource name and then the data. That could be interesting. Um, we could even go as far as doing like that. Yeah. Now, what did we actually, did I even make the endpoint? I don't remember if I did. So I made, I made the handler, right, to implement it. I don't know if I added it to the, um, what is it, main.rs here? Right, so we have records, episodes. So I have a git list and a create implemented. Um, so that you might be inclined to say, oh, well, I'll just use records, episodes, and then use another HTTP verb. Um, but we don't have a lot of options there. We're already using post for creating. We could use put. Uh, are we using, yeah, we're already using put to handle updates. Ooh, we could use put. So we're using, we're using put now for the individual records. We're not using the put method um, for like the, the overall resource endpoint. So put could be interesting as like a bulk create option. Although I don't think the semantics are kind of weird because when I think of a put to kind of that kind of endpoint, I'm thinking of like, uh, well, now that kind of makes sense. I could, I could see that versus like a patch, right? If we were implementing the patch HTTP verb on this kind of like top level resource endpoint, I would expect us to be able to do like an upsert or to modify multiple records at once. So like a bulk update uh, equivalent to this bulk create that we're doing. So maybe a put makes sense here. So we can handle put. Um, let's see, we wanna be before that comma. Put, uh-huh. Yeah, and then it already knows, hey, there's a create bulk. Yep. Um, module inside of episode. So that, yeah, then we have that. Okay, so now if we do a put request to records episodes, we've I've not added an endpoint for an individual record, like an episode record yet, not that far in. Um, yeah, in fact, I think a lot of the things that we'll be doing, let me go back to my list of issues. Uh, scan for produce videos for episodes, mesh files to episodes and updates. I think a lot of the things I want to do next, like the next couple of things, don't involve individual episode records. They'll be like bulk operations from the list view. So I don't think we need to worry about those other endpoints yet. Okay, so that's the that's the bit that we're missing here in the back end of our CRUD API. Let me um, get that build going. Is it just CRUD? API. So that I'll rebuild the, the image and update the service. I actually remembered before the stream to have everything rebuilt and restarted. So uh, at least everything else should be up to date with what I currently have checked out. Uh, okay, so back to here. So Instead of what Copilot had written for us here, we're gonna do put, <clears throat> and it's just gonna be base URL resource. And what we're gonna say is that uh, it's, uh, it's not this, right? Because the expectation is the body of the request is gonna have some key episodes hmm. ba, 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 ba. I think maybe I want to kind of come up with a convention here 
for these bulk operations. I don't know if I'm gonna need more than one, but if I want to have something in the front end that's generic for all kind of resources, what's this complaining about? Converted to an async function? Yeah, we might do that. Um, if I wanna do this, then really what I wanna do is I wanna have like a, a convention like this is gonna be records, perhaps, like that. And so this should be records. And what I'll want to do is make sure that if I define any other bulk operations, they have the same kind of structure where there's a key. Um, I There's a reason, I don't remember specifically if what that reason was or if that still applies, but I have a dislike <laughs> for passing around um, arrays directly um, for like these, these network payloads. Now that may not be, like I said, I don't exactly remember. I feel like that was something more about, I don't know, there, there's a memory there somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have that. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, I could, we just made a change to the credit API, so I'll rebuild again. Maybe we can stop making changes to that. Uh, let's see here. We should be able to convert to an async function. Um, so that means instead of, we don't need to return a wait, that's unnecessary. So now instead of having, so here's how it was before, right? So we're using a promise chain. Instead of doing that and then having a callback to get the JSON out, instead we are doing this. Now, I don't know if we're gonna care about the response value, but we'll take it. Yeah, so this should be good. Or is it? Should it be base URL slash records? Yes. Yes. Right, because base URL is not what we're passing to simple da uh, REST data provider. Base URL is like the API URL, and then all the CRUD endpoints are inside of records which this is a credit endpoint, so it's inside of records. So it should be like that. Okay, so now we have a bulk create uh, method here. Um, oh yeah, so um, our other endpoints are defined in a slightly different way, but I think this is syntactically equivalent, right? So the other ones, we have a key, like this is just, this is just an object. Right, so we have a key and then the value is this uh, anonymous async function. Here, we're defining the exact same thing, except we say async and then the name and then the function. But this, this does the same thing, I believe. So here's a question. <laughs> uh, do I wanna go back and change the rest of them to match? I don't see why not. I think in, a, in a, another circumstance, if I had things that weren't functions here, where this is the syntax I have to use to define a key and then a value, then I might prefer to keep it that way, the, the way the, this one just was a second ago, um, for consistency sake, maybe. An argument can be could be made for that anyway. Look how many characters I'm saving. <laughs> it's not a, it's not really a consideration, but it, it it is true that this is fewer characters. Okay. So that's that. Now we we've we're kind of working back forward. Right, so we have um, off stream, I, I did um, the database stuff, 
uh, created the uh, the migration to create the database table, wherever that was. Brainless Society, zero one zero zero one zero zero zero. Is that? One, two, three, four, five. Is that a reference? That's not a Futurama, Futurama reference, is it? Or is that just saying hello? Ah, it is hello. <laughs> now, I, um, yes, indeed. Those are the, 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 well, when I see a string of binary numbers like that, that's actually too many binary uh, digits for the Futurama reference, I think. But uh, <laughs> that's the first thing I think of. And then I noticed that there were five groups. So the first thing that I thought of there was hello. I don't know. Uh, I can't read binary fast enough to otherwise <laughs> translate that into ASCII. I don't, I don't have an ASCII lookup table in my head, but yeah. It was a guess. So anyway, good morning. How's it going? Uh, right, I was navigating through the credit API. I was going to demonstrate that, yes, indeed, there is a migration to create uh, an episodes table uh, and some other stuff, too. All good? That's good. Um, some things that I had not created yet. So I wanted a table to represent like topics. So like tags or labels to go across uh, things. And then a series table, which we'll come back to at some point, but like a way to link like all the episodes about a thing. So like you can imagine a series in this database might be all of the videos about glowing telegram. That might be a series. Uh, and then we have a many to many table between topics and series and uh, topics to episodes. So that, that exists. And then the API for bulk create and the other stuff we were just looking at. And now we have data provider uh, method bulk create. And so now we need to make our um, const uh, bulk create episodes. Let's see what Copilot writes for us. And Brainless said, I was working yesterday on my change history implementation for the Elixir booking service. I am 90% done. Change history? Are you building a time machine? <laughs> uh, I love unit tests, caught a hard to find bug thanks to them. I always advocate for unit testing because of things like that. Yes, indeed. I, um, I've not shown a lot of that on stream. I mean, I think, like a couple of things, like when we were working on the duration stuff, I, I wrote some unit tests, but um, you know, this project is <laughs> something that could use more. Um, and I usually write more unit tests. Uh, it's just that uh, a lot of this is just kind of throwing things, like this is a, this is a big prototype as far as I'm concerned. Um, and not something that like, Let's say, let's say I wanted to make this into a product, like for people to use. We are so far away from that. There are all sorts of considerations that, um, like, how is it packaged? Is it a SaaS solution? Is it like a thing that's distributed? Are we standing it up in a on a cloud platform as a thing that you self-host or, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, but along with that are <laughs> like making this into something that would be like uh reliable and debuggable and yeah all those considerations i'm not considering right now but yeah unit tests are good and and other tests up the testing pyramid some various kinds of integration tests performance testing uh end-to-end -end tests ui tests Brainless says, I had like six functions in Elixir with different input types and had not noticed I was not passing an optional parameter, which defined if the field was supposed to be masked. Right. Thus, if the data type was a date time, I was not 
obfuscating the value. Obf obfuscating? Isn't there supposed to be a B in that word? I don't know. Uh, is this... Is this the button that I want? Not a native. It's okay. It's a weird word. I read it as it sounds, yeah. It is not a common word to use in everyday situations, at least in my experience. Okay, so we are getting the record context. We are grabbing the refresh. I don't know that we need to refresh here. I don't know. So once we create the episodes, we might want to actually go to the episode list view. Or we might want to just say it was successful, like do a toast, show a toast here, um, because we might have unsaved changes in this view. Uh, as far as bulk create episodes goes, we are, yeah, that's just calling mutate. Mutate we're getting from the use mutation hook. We're calling data provider bulk create episodes. That's not a thing that exists. It's actually bulk create. Uh, and then this parameter should be our episodes. What did we just import? Not that, okay. Uh, I'm getting used to the multiple functions with the same name, but different parameters than Elixir was. So we're two weeks ago. So like uh, overloading. We have, uh, wait, not, is it overloading? Um, Not polymorphism. Words. I want to say overloading. I think it is, yeah. But, yeah, being able to have multiple, have essentially one method that has different implementations depending on the signature of the arguments to it. Right? Okay, um, so somehow we need episodes here. Uh, and how do we get that? So you have foo that takes, so is that like a destructuring with a default value? Def foo another. Wait, so is that? It's interesting. I mean, is that implying that it's it's determining which one to invoke based on if the input is a map with a key? Yeah, exactly. So it's not just about like number of arguments or the types of the particular arguments, but this is more like um, guarding, right? So it's like if it <laughs> if it if it it's a map with this key, you use this implementation, otherwise use a different one. Yeah, cool. All right, how do we get the episodes? Um, I think this is something where we have to do something here. So we have this timeline component, which has an error apparently. Oh yeah, we have Okay, well, we're not using this. Uh, 
Handle function makes the dependencies of use effect hook at line 60 change on every render. Yes. Move it inside of the use effect callback. Alternately wrap the definition of handle wheel and its own use callback hook. Okay. Right. Is that? Why wasn't I uh, getting this error before? And what's this about? Ref likely have changed the time this effect cleanup function runs. If this ref points to a node rendered by React, copy timeline ref that current to a variable inside the effect and use that variable in the cleanup function. Uh, fair, fair. All right, so we have a closure here for the cleanup. So inside of that uh, cleanup callback, we can just refer to timeline if it exists. Random things. Uh, what is this? <laughs> it's defined, but never. Oh, yeah, that's fair. No, that needs to be like that. This is an ESLint role issue. <sighs> that shouldn't be necessary, but... Uh, all right, so anyway, so on change is the thing I was originally, that's why I came to this file, because we have a on change. Uh, is the back, is the chat box supposed to have a background color? You mean this, this here? Uh, it's kind of, it's just supposed to be a, you know, semi-transparent. The color is basically gray. Why? Why do you ask? This one right here you're talking about, I'm assuming. So do we make this so that we're calling on change from here? Yes. I see, just wondering if I was intentional, it's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be somewhat translucent so that you can see through. So it's not completely blocking what's behind it. But that there's enough contrast so that, um, specifically I was thinking that the text would be more legible if there was something there as a background versus it just being the text on top of, you know, whatever happened to be on screen there at that particular point in time. It seemed like a good idea. Maybe it still is. So we have these indices, which we are setting from the index from handle segment click. Okay. Index segments map. Segments is what we're passing into the timeline, right? Makes sense? Cool. Okay, so from here, we have the segments. So this is the, the silences we've detected. And we have a on change uh, method um, callback function thing here. So I think what we need to do is 
connect those <laughs> into some state and make that state available to our button. So this is gonna be like a, um, what did I call it? Bulk, that one, there we go. Um, yes, so what it's gonna take is it's gonna take, oops, it's gonna take uh, some segments And it's going to, this is specifically going to be, uh, let's see, there's not really any point in me keeping a sh like a copy of the specific segments. So I think instead, I will want to, yeah. Um, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna have some state here. Uh, const. Uh, let's see. Call it selected segments. Selected se segment indices. There we go. And then segments here is going to be not that. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use silence detection segments. Can does the filter method give us an index? I think so. Is it really? Ba, 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 ba. Callback function takes element index and the array. Cool. So basically I'm going to build a version of silence detection segments that only includes the selected ones. And we're gonna pass that in to bulk uh, create episode button, create episodes button. And um, we might still need the record actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we definitely need the segments. Let's see if I can make Copilot write this for me. Any, not any. Um, what is the type? Oh, we don't know. What What is it in silence detection segments? Isn't it just start and end? I think it is. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to build out the episodes by uh, mapping over segments. Not like that. semicolon there this closes that this closes that need one more parin mm, excuse me and then yeah something like that but not like that the these values are are wrong uh, and we don't want to refresh we want to probably just tell the user that we're done like 
const notify equals use notify. And we need to import that from uh, React Admin. I thought there was a thing called called that. Let's see. Yep. And we can remove some stuff here that we're not using. Okay, still not right, but it's closer. So segment start and segment end are the values. And we do need the stream ID to link the episode that we're creating back to the stream that is sourced from, right? So the stream record represents all of the video and audio and all the details of the underlying media for the episode. And the episode is just like a slice of it or potentially multiple slices of it. Um, so the other thing that's important to do here is to look at the definition on the back end. And the thing that if uh, at some point would be really nice would be a way to generate compatible TypeScript types for the structs that the backend uses so that we could type check against that. Uh, but currently I don't have that. So instead I'll just do it by I, which uh, surely nothing could possibly go wrong with that. Uh, right, so in the front end, what we're building is an array that gets passed in to records. So the elements of the array should match this. Uh, description and thumbnail URL are optional. So then that leaves us with uh, the stream ID. Hey, that one was right. And then tracks and title. So title. <laughs> Silence. Uh, I realized something just now, but uh, let's just say to do. If I could just type it. Uh, and then we have tracks. Right? But not like this. So the thing, the gap here between what we're the the path we are going towards and what we actually need to do is that what we what we have being passed in here you found yourself some ice cream nice the what we have right here is something where the segments are the things that are being selected here this this thing oops so janky uh, this thing and this thing, right? That's what is being passed in, kind of the start and end times, durations, here and here and here and here. But guess what? That's not what we need. What we need are the start and end times of the periods of time between them. So we're gonna work on that after the break. <laughs> 